everyone, my name is Ksenia and if you're here, you're probably interested in sustainability, zero waste, minimalism and mental health. In today's video, to honor the second hand September, I'm going to share a comprehensive guide for sustainable second hand shopping and also care tips for your clothes on how to keep it fresh, nice and serving you for a very long time. Overall, I'm a great proponent of secondhand shopping. However, I talked about this in my previous video that for many people, thrifting is not a luxury, but a necessity. And this causes gentrification of the secondhand stores, which means that the prices are going up, up, and uh, some people cannot afford even secondhand clothing anymore. This is why I'm always causing everyone to, if you can afford to buy from sustainable uh, brands because you encourage sustainable businesses and if, for example if you're plus size or if you are uh, short or tall you can also request more um, and expect more sizes from a sustainable and inclusive brand rather than from a fast fashion brand or vintage. So I really love thrifting and uh, what I'm wearing today is a testament to this, but also I uh, prefer buying things secondhand. I got an old 20 year old car that I got uh, from um, uh, from Mark Platz, from this kind of like eBay, but in the Netherlands, uh, couch, uh, camera, phone, laptop, um, a lot of things that you can think of can be bought secondhand. And uh, I'm going to share some thrifting tips, particularly for clothes, but also uh, for other secondhand purchases in this video. Uh, for some reason, uh, a lot of people think that secondhand stores are all dirty and the clothes there is disgusting, but that's not true. They are usually washed and clean or even uh, been through the chemical cleaning and they are absolutely safe. But even if you're feeling iffy about it, you can do a light wash when you purchase the items. Keep your mind open and re uh, research the shopping, you know, the charity shops and secondhand shops in your area. See when they restock because I know uh, one of the secondhand stores in my area restocks usually on Friday night. So the best deals you can get are on Saturday morning and you have to come here come there for the opening time <laughs> to get the best deal. Also, um, take your time and do not rush. Uh, look at the items and if you're too lazy to try them on, it means you do not need the item because even if it's too cheap, you um, there's absolutely no necessity for you to buy it, right? We still want to limit overconsumption if it even if it is overconsumption of thrifted items. Thrifting is a lot like searching for treasures because you can always find a diamond in the rough, but that means that you actually have to pay attention and look at each item and try it on. I usually like to limit uh, the um, type of item I'm looking for, for example, when I went, I looked at a lot of hoodies because it was cold and I guess I was feeling cold and I was gravitating towards the hoodies until I saw the wreck with the October 1st cloning. And then of course I tried everything that I thought would be in my size, which was actually not many items, a lot of them were uh, very small. What helps me a lot is creating a stop list um, 
first of all at some point i would get so many shorts for the summer that i had uh, too many of them or just uh, didn't need any new ones so i would be avoiding the racks with shorts or skirts or pants so that i um, invest in tops instead um, and not shorts nothing for the bottom for the summer another thing is having uh duplicates and having too many you know having it's great to have a staple in your cloth clothing but at the same time um uh to someone from the outside it just looks like you're wearing the same thing every day and they don't know that okay this one has mesh and this one is a little bit different color but usually if an item is just, for example, a turtleneck. It can become your signature item, of course, but then at the same time, people perceive it just like, oh, uh, they are wearing turtlenecks every day. But if you don't want to make this impression, then try to avoid duplicates, even if they are in the same, uh, in the different colors. And uh, one of the last styling tips, um, when you, try to build a sustainable wardrobe, a capsule wardrobe, and when you start researching uh, things like um, what to start with, what are the basics of your wardrobe. A lot of vloggers uh, like to have must-haves, um, for example, uh, blue jeans, white tee, black blazer, and so on. I think that's um, very basic and cookie cut uh, view of uh, a wardrobe you definitely might want to have something basic but at the same time if you're uh, a parent for example and if you're a stay-at-home parent uh, you would have limited um, use of blazers or any tailored clothing uh, that needs ironing, for example. So uh, instead you would be gravitating and investing in pieces that are more comfortable, wearable, easy to wash and stuff like that. And this is just one of the examples, right? Um, for example, I do require a little bit of dressy clothing sometimes because I do go to the office. So I do invest in some things that are for office uh, only. And then I have more leisure clothing, uh, specifically because I work in the garden. So having a white tee <laughs> and jeans, for example, is very impractical for me because it's too casual to wear to the office, but at the same time, it's too light if it's like especially light skin jeans are not very comfortable to do gardening and so i would definitely gravitate in you know choose just a pair of very informal pants and shirt for doing gardening and then something dressier like tailored trousers for work a lot of people are also asking me uh, if uh, they do not have options for shopping in the store for second hand, how they can uh, still thrift and try to be more sustainable, but online. That's quite easy because there are a lot of resale platforms nowadays for secondhand clothing and items as well, you know, like Facebook Marketplace where you can literally sell a house or a used car or a sweater or just give away child toys that you do not need and so on. But then also area specific, um, websites um, like Markplatz, Vinted for uh, Europe, Depop for the US and eBay as well, it's quite international and there are several luxury resale platforms as well like Vestiaire Collective which sells uh, reused luxury items and some of the brands or resale platforms even have their um, have sustainable or pre-loved version on their website like Cos Resale and Zalando Pre-Loved. <clears throat> 
it's obviously much harder to shop uh, offline uh, online because you cannot try on the item but it's very useful to know your measurements especially in different sizes and countries uh, in inches and centimeters so that it's easier for you to know how the item will fit usually uh, there are no models advertised in the items either so it's hard that's why you have to look at the fabric and um, the fit of an item to understand how it's going to fit your body uh, for example if it's very thick cotton 100% cotton or linen you know that it's not going to be stretchy uh, and then you have to size up if you don't want so that you if there is a size up available or this item is not for you uh, or if it is um, with a little bit of elastane you know that it's going to be a stretchy item so it's going to fit the body more closely usually depending on the item size but then you can try to gauge how the potential item will fit what i usually like to do is that i know my measurements in some of the common brands like massimo Dutti. so when i buy secondhand items from people i know that i um gravitate you know my bottom is more size 44 which is um xxl and then my top is size 42 which is xl and that's how i know um which items to get but of course um they can it can be completely different for a different brand right um if you want to um, resell the items online that's also possible of for example for offline what i usually do is i swap with my friends and family sometimes i just give away items or we swap because if, if especially if the sizes match that's very convenient then you can get a new item without actually spending money money just uh, swapping with your surroundings and then if you actually uh, want to make some money or if you just want to clear up your wardrobe and uh, find a home for your pieces you can sell them on the platforms that I've mentioned <clears throat> make sure that you make good quality photos and maybe use a mannequin or some kind of um, maybe even uh, wear them yourself uh, wear the items yourself to see uh, to show how they look make sure they are washed and clean and if there are any imperfections um, make a picture of that and of course that will cause the discount of the price speaking of the price i would sell i would say that um, immediately you will never get the same amount of money you spend on the item uh, when you resell it, so make peace with that. The fact that you paid uh, $100 for something doesn't mean that you can request the same amount for for this item because it is not new anymore. So I would say that uh, the rule of a thumb is that it will be at least half the price and then uh, um, expect that the buyer will try to re uh, renegotiate. This, of course, does not apply for uh, luxury items that sometimes can be limited or only um, rise in price in the future. And, of course, um, I would say that the last, uh, uh, absolutely the last means would be trying to donate or getting rid of the items because you know uh, the stores are already over you know they are over crowded with people's stuff <laughs> that no people bought and I didn't want in the end so be mindful of that and absolutely never ever sell or donate things that um, 
are soiled or completely ruined and that you wouldn't wear yourself anymore or you wouldn't want to get or buy because I think that people sometimes have a very high opinion of what their Mm, their things are worth just because that means a lot to you probably doesn't mean that it will mean a lot to somebody else because they do not have any memories linked to this item so I would say that when you donate you have to research really consciously where to put it don't just uh, drop it in the clothing donation bin, especially without having it, the items cleaned and wrapped in a plastic bag so that they cannot get wet or dirty. I know that animal shelters require um, quite a lot of um, resources, for example, um, rags uh, to make blankets for sleeping for the animals or just towels or anything like that so that could be a useful way to upcycle your clothes and another thing is um, making uh, sometimes car industries uh, use um, old uh, clothes and blankets to uh, put to put inside the furniture so to stuff inside the furniture so that could be another useful way to get rid of your clothes but before we even consider getting rid of your clothes think of how you can prevent uh, it wearing out and how you can prolong using it as long as possible because after all the most sustainable thing is uh, to reconsider buying something new, going without, upcycling and reusing it. I would say that um, you definitely need to treat your items and it comes to almost anything in life but also clothing with respect, you know, the Marie Kondo rule or even if you are getting rid of the items you always thank them for the service that they uh, provided and also remember that anything in the world took resources and labor to make and that's why uh, you have to treat all the items with respect i'm not necessarily saying that you have to talk to them or <laughs> Uh, praise them for the work that they do but what you can do is um, take good care of them and for example store items appropriately for example if they require to be hanged uh, they should be or uh, especially if they are knitted items um, do not hang them you have, they have to be folded so that they do not stretch out if you're seeing some signs of wear in the item, for example, here from rubbing, you, you see peeling, this could be easily removed as well with a, um, with a razor or with a special tool. And I have a video on how I remove peelings from my sweater. I uh, also do not subscribe to the fact that you have to wash your items after every wear. I'm of course not talking about your underwear or things that come directly in contact with your body. But um, for example, for this uh, dress that comes on top, I would definitely hold on on washing it after the first wear. Most of the time, especially now with a variety of laundry detergent and also sustainable ones, uh, you don't need high temperature for clothing to be completely clean. Most of the detergents work in 30 degrees Celsius water, so a cold wash. You can also soak the clothes with some baking soda to prevent um, odor and you can line dry or dry uh, horizontally like uh, for example a cashmere sweater or a woolen sweater I would recommend drying horizontally between two towels or, or, or just drying on 
uh, horizontal surface uh, so that the item does not stretch. And of course, signs of uh, wear are completely normal in the clothing, especially the ones that you love. And some of the items look even better when they are worn. For example, think of the leather items or the belts and shoes and mm, mm, uh, bags. They become so much more tender with wear and all the scratches make them all have character. And if your uh, items have holes in them, they're quite easy to fix even without equipment. Uh, I um, regularly fix mine, my partner's clothing. I'm not a pro by no means and I do not know many types of stitches, but the ones that I use are a good fix and I even tried to in install a new zipper for the dress that um, I put on, couldn't take it off. I had to cut it off from me <laughs> and that was embarrassing. But um, in the end, oh, what I did, I put uh, on the zipper to make it easier to take off. It still is a bit tight for me, but I'm hopeful that for the next summer I can uh, wear it. I also have this black dress that you've probably have seen in some of my videos. Uh, I've worn it before, I really love it. It's, I've been fixing, I think because it's a bit tight on my shoulders and I lift up my arms and move around, I bend over too fast. Um, the dress is just ripping at the seams and I've been fixing it already two or three times. And it's lost its color a little bit, which is common in black items. So I'm thinking I can get some fabric dye and renew the color a little bit. But Or maybe I can research for more natural ways of renewing the color. Maybe using some um, natural... Um, Pigments. I'm not sure if there are any natural black pigments, maybe only charcoal or something like that. I don't know how well it would stain. I would have to experiment with that. Let me know if you would be interested in it. I think uh, this is pretty much it. I've shared all my expertise on buying things secondhand and making them last. Let me know if you'd like some more tips and tricks about style, fashion, all things thrifted and how I take care of my items. And as all YouTubers and vloggers are supposed to say, please like this video and subscribe. Bye!